And Mr. President, while we're on the topic of actions taken by the Department of Defense that don't show adequate and appropriate and necessary respect for those who stand in harm's way to protect us and defend us. I want to tell you the story of a brave young man, a U.S. Navy lieutenant named Ridge Alconis. Mr. President, Ridge Alconis uh, is one of the best and the brightest that our Navy has to offer, that America has to offer. A graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy, a decorated officer who served his country well, who goes above and beyond the call of duty uh, by, by every account that I can find or that I have access to. Lieutenant Alconis, who is also the, the father of three young children and the devoted husband to his wife, Brittany, sits today languishing in a Japanese prison. You may ask, what has he done? What put him there? Why is he in prison in Japan? Did he steal something? Did he harm someone? No, none of the above. No, Mr. President, uh, at the end of May, uh, May 29th of 2021, Lieutenant Alconis and his wife, Brittany, along with their three children, decided to take a, a brief road trip to go see Mount Fuji. And while descending from Mount Fuji, he suffered a most unfortunate, most unforeseen, and unforeseeable medical emergency, one that caused him to lose consciousness while driving. His young daughter, seeing that he had lost consciousness, tried to wake him up. She kicked the seat, she yelled, she did everything she could to wake him up, and he didn't wake up. You see, he wasn't asleep. He lost consciousness. He suffered from a, a rare medical condition that he didn't know he had. A very, uh, uh, he couldn't have known that he had this medical condition. It caused him to lose consciousness at that moment. Tragically, uh, while he was unconscious, the car he was driving uh, was involved in an accident, one that, uh, uh, one that took the lives of two Japanese nationals. Uh, my, my heart breaks for them, for the family members of these individuals whose lives were lost on, uh, on May 29th, 2021 in Japan. I know that Lieutenant Alconis, with whom I've spoken, uh, as I've visited him in prison in Japan, uh, his heart breaks for them as well. Our entire country uh, extends our thoughts, our prayers, and our well wishes to the family. Uh, to the family members of those victims. But this was not a criminal act, Mr. President. This was a medical emergency, one that resulted in a tragedy. And I'm so sad that it did. And no one is more sad about this than Lieutenant Alconis and his family. You see, in Japan, they have a different system than ours. In the United States, this wouldn't result in someone going to prison. This wouldn't result in criminal charges of any kind. This would be regarded for what it is, which is a, a tragedy resulting from a medical emergency, an accident that wasn't foreseen or foreseeable. We wouldn't send someone to prison for that here in the United States. We understand that different countries have different systems of law, and we do our very best to respect the laws of other countries. But that's why he's in prison today. But my pur purpose in raising this today is to talk about how our country handled it, not about how Japan handled it. We can talk about that perhaps on another day, but today I want to talk about how the United States military is handling this tragedy. When a U.S. military officer or enlisted person isn't able to be present for duty. 
he or she will stop getting paid. Will stop getting paid if they're absent from their work. It's not surprising. Pretty much any job works that way. And like most jobs, if you're absent from your work, your employer can make a decision about whether the absence was um, unavoidable and should therefore be excused. An employer in the private sector might, for example, decide to continue to pay someone for a period of time if uh, the circumstances warrant it. They might warrant it, particularly if the absence was brought about as a result of the conditions in which the person was working on the job. For, for example, imagine you were running a business and you had an employee who you assigned to work somewhere in a foreign country for a period of time, and something like this happened. I would imagine that many, if not most, if not all sane employers would do everything they possibly could to take care of the family and of, the, uh, of that particular employee and that employee's family if something like this happened in a country where they were present only as a result of their work assignment. And in fact, there is a, a statute that deals with this very thing for employees of the Department of Defense. That statute is codified at 37 U.S.C. Section 503. Here's what it says, Mr. President. Quote, a member of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Space Force, Coast Guard, or National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration who is absent without leave or over leave forfeits all pay and allowances for the period of that absence unless it is excused as unavoidable. Unless it is excused as unavoidable. It's exactly what the Department of Defense should do right now, Mr. President, is excuse as unavoidable Lieutenant Alconis's absence. It seems to me that if ever there were an instance perfectly tailored for this statute, if ever there were an absence that needed to be excused as unavoidable, it's that of Lieutenant Ridge Alconis. So with that in mind, and with the needs of his wife, Brittany, and their three young children who are still in Japan, Lieutenant Alconis filed the paperwork for an exception to policy with the Department of Defense. Now, that application was filed many, many months ago. And um, we now find ourselves in a situation in which that application has not been granted. They filed this, I believe, back in, in June. It was transferred from one office to another in July. It was transferred, sent over to the office of the undersecretary of the Department of Defense a few months later. It still hasn't been acted on formally. I've spoken with more officials within the Department of Defense than I can even count at this moment. I've been on this uh, uh, pattern of making phone calls since um, just a few weeks after this was filed in June. Um, I've spoken with officials within the Office of the Secretary of the Navy, including the Secretary himself. I've spoken to Under Secretary Cisneros. I've spoken even to Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, and I've appreciated their willingness to take my phone calls. And they still haven't acted. They still haven't granted those. 
still hasn't happened. Now, keep in mind, this has been in the office of the Secretary of Defense since September 3rd. So we're going on three and a half months since that was forwarded, and they still haven't acted. Now, I finally spoke with Under Secretary Cisneros. He was one of the last people I got through to. It took me three weeks to get through to the Under Secretary. Three weeks of calling. I finally got through to him. And during that phone call, I appreciated the fact that he finally took it. He assured me that um, whatever decision was made, it would be a decision that was uh, made by the appropriate personnel and that it would be in the best, whatever was in the best interests of the Department of Defense. I told him at the time I, I, I believed that what was best for the Alconas family would itself be what was in the best interests of the Department of Defense. You see, Mr. President, because there are a lot of, a lot of problems that our Department of Defense has right now. Recruiting is down, morale is down, threats to our national security are up, there are more demands on our military men and women than ever before. Why would you want to take one of your best and your brightest, one of your smartest, one of, one of these people who, I, I, I've talked to so many people who have worked with him in his chain of command, who have described him as the kind of guy who will do something that needs to be done even before anyone else realizes it needs to be done. He'll, he'll go out on his own and proactively take steps to improve himself, to improve others around him. He's exactly what the Navy, what the Department of Defense, and what the United States of America needs. So why, why, when you put him in a vulnerable position, you send him to Japan? And, and look, we do, I don't understand Japan's laws. They're very different than our own. But they're Japan. It's their country. Those are their laws. It's what they do. We may not, within the United States government, be able to solve that particular issue. I wish we, wish we could. I hope we can at some point. Those are conversations for a different day. But for today, we can deal with this. We can take care of this family. So let's, let's go back to... November 2nd, so I had that conversation with Secretary Cisneros. I told Sec Under Secretary Cisneros the, uh, that it was imperative that this be acted upon quickly because Ridge Alconis's leave was going to be running out. You see, since he was actually put in prison in July of this year, it, it took uh, you know, between the accident that occurred the end of May 2021, the time the criminal charges were filed, uh, and, and completed. It wasn't until July that he actually reported to prison. And since July, Lieutenant Alconis and his wife, Brittany, and their three children have been relying on the fact that he had accumulated leave, leave accumulated over the years, that have lasted him this long. And I told Under Secretary Cisneros on November 2nd, it's really important that this be acted upon quickly because the Alconises need this. They need this right away. They need the certainty of it. They need to be able to plan their lives. I then started seeking a call with Secretary Austin, the Secretary of Defense. It took me three weeks to get that one scheduled. Three weeks. Finally spoke to him on November 29th. Secretary Austin callously informed me that day that the request for the exception to policy would not be granted. I asked him why. He believed that it wasn't appropriate for the department to do that. It was a private conversation, so I'm not going to go into all the details of it there. But I asked him at that moment, if, if that's your, your decision, will you at least formalize it and put it out so that it's in public, so that we can discuss it, so that its, it's relative merits 
can be addressed so that we as a Congress can figure out uh, once on public notice of what the action was and why it was taken, how we can decide how best to address it. If somehow, uh, uh, beyond my ability to comprehend as a lawyer and as a United States Senator, but if somehow the statutory text of 37 U.S.C. Section 503, if it contains something saying you, you may not uh, uh, grant an exception to policy in this circumstance, similar to that of, of Lieutenant Alconis, then we could at least be on notice of that so that we as a Congress could figure out how to change the law so that it doesn't take that into account. I have yet to tell this story to a single member of the United States Congress, Democrat or Republican, House or Senate, who isn't moved by the story and who doesn't conclude of course, this is a no-brainer. Of course we should take care of him and his family. Of course they should be granted an exception to policy. But to do that, Mr. President, we have to be able to have the notice of what their decision is, the actual decision itself, and why it came about. I asked him when that would be coming, and he said, soon. And I said, how soon? Reminding him that we're just weeks away. In fact, Mr. President, we're now, we are now less than two weeks away before Lieutenant Alconis's leave runs out. And before his wife, Brittany, and their three children, who are still in Japan, will have no source of, of income. These are three very young children. The older kids are homeschooled by Brittany Alconis. They're in Japan, not a cheap place to live, and their income stream is about to run out. Now, the, the casual, calloused observer might be res respond by saying, okay, well, then, then uh, uh, she can just go back to the United States. <laughs> okay, and then what? Go back to the United States. You know what that means? That would mean that they don't ever get to see their husband and their father. In fact, because of the way the rules work in Japan, they can't even talk to him on the phone. There would be no interaction with Lieutenant Alconis by his wife and their three children if they just left. So leaving is a problem. It still doesn't solve the problem of, of income. This very young stay-at-home mom who homeschools their children, what is she supposed to do? So she's got this Hobson's choice, this absolutely awful dilemma, rather than the prisoner's dilemma, we'll call it the prisoner's wife's dilemma. This is inexcusable. The fact that they won't excuse as unavoidable Lieutenant Alconis's absence is itself inexcusable, and we must act. It's more difficult for us to act because the Department of Defense hasn't even had the decency to issue a public pronouncement for this. I find this reprehensible. Earlier today, uh, in fact, just uh, uh, an hour or two ago, Mrs. Brittany Alconis sent out a series of tweets, and, and, and one of them said the following. She said, in 13 days, our pay and benefits will be turned off. I won't be able to support our children or Ridge, that is Lieutenant Alconis, and I clearly won't be able to count on the U.S. Navy to do so either. This is not a way to treat those who stand in harm's way so that we can live and be safe and be free. This isn't a way to treat anyone. None of us would treat our employees that way. I don't know anyone who would. On top of everything else, it's not just the fact that they've now stated that they're going to deny it, it's that they waited so long to do so, and that they still haven't had the decency to say so in public. And then, on top of all of that, they're going to have her kicked to the curb at Christmas time in a foreign land 
Uh, this is just disgraceful. Look, um, I get it. I know the Department of Defense is really big. I, I, I know that the burdens faced by Secretary Austin under Secretary Cisneros and, and uh, so many others that I've spoken to and those that I haven't spoken to within the Department of Defense, I know that they are immense. I'm grateful to them and, uh, and for the service they provide to our great country. I'm grateful that they have taken time to examine this issue. They've reached the wrong conclusion and they've done it in the wrong way. Fortunately, Mr. President, there's still time. The time is short, but there's still time for them to make right that which is wrong. They can still take care of Brittany Alconis and the three children of Ridge and Brittany Alconis. They can still do that. I urge them to do so. If they don't do it, we will have no choice as a Congress but to act. The Department of Defense may or may not like w whatever legislation we put in place in order to do it, but it, it'll happen. It's hard for it to happen, perhaps impossible for it to happen, until they issue their actual decision so that we know what it is that we're correcting. They should at least have the decency to do that. But the United States must not allow this family to be treated this way. In no other circumstance that I can find has anyone going back many, many decades serving for the United States Armed Forces in Japan or any other place that I'm aware of been placed in prison as a result of a medical emergency. So this truly is exceptional, and that's what makes the exception to policy so meritorious and so worthy. He did nothing wrong. This was not foreseeable. It was not avoidable. He was in Japan only because he was assigned to serve in Japan, where he has served faithfully. We must correct this wrong. And I'll be back to the Senate floor as often as it takes. Once we have the actual decision in hand, I'll know what legislation to push for. I'll know what office to reconfigure, what statutory language to strip out or add. They need to issue that right away. But even better, they need to issue their decision not to deny, but to grant the exception to policy for Lieutenant Ridge Alconis. The Alconis family, and the United States itself deserves nothing less. Thank you, Mr. President.